Hi, my name is Olivier and welcome to my channel where I show you how I like to create concept art. In uh, this video, I'm going to show you how I created this image here um, using the uh, hair system in Blender. In a simple way, I'm going to show you how I set it up and how you can do the same as well to uh, create a um, any type of landscape, cityscape, where you want to scatter geometry across the surface. In addition, I'll also show uh, briefly how I like to use this type of technique uh, to get into the environments and uh, use it like a relocation so I can go in and start shooting with my camera. So I have Blender open um, and for uh, this mini project, what I wanted to do was a um, dune type of landscape with um, some rocks scattered across the surface. And so in terms of assets, what I have is uh, the dunes here that I generated in uh, Word Creator. And I have the rocks here um, that I uh, created uh, from Megascan. And I uh, kit bashed them together to create some, some kind of design. And um, so I respect the, the, uh, the principle of, of design, which is uh, big, medium, and small. Um, so I created three types um, um, of, of those rocks. They, they are very similar. Um, and um, so those are going to be my starter pack for, for this project. And I also have um, another um, set of rocks here. They're individuals, um, still from Mega Scans. Um, and uh, those are just going to be maybe uh, supplemental uh, rocks that uh, to fill out all those areas that may be um, a bit too big. Okay, so um, it's um, it's fairly simple. Um, I, I like to keep my uh, workflow and my uh, work uh, pretty easy and uh, not too complicated, if possible. So um, if you go to the particle tab here, um, so if you click on it, you click on the uh, add button. And here you're going to have uh, so the particle system uh, created. And uh, so what we want to do first is uh, click on the hair one because we want to um, instance um, across this surface, right? Like like the hair, basically. So if you click on that, um, <clears throat> then what I like to do, um, we want to go to the render uh, tab. And instead of path in the render as, we click on object. So this will be basically, you will grab um, your object that you want and it will replace um, all any of the hair um, that you have on your, on your uh, surface. We'll replace it with uh, the piece of geometry that you want to. Um, so if, let's just grab it. Uh, you can click on that little uh, eye drop here and um, you can hover over your geometry. And I'm going to start with the biggest rock first. So if I click on it, um, I think nothing happens at first. Oh, no, actually, I selected the wrong uh, geometry. So if you select your um, um, plane, where you want to have your uh, object being scattered, and let's we'll go back and add it. So the particle system is uh, now created. Um, I like to keep it tidy as well, so so we don't get too uh, confused with uh, with the work that we do. So I'm just going to call this one um, Big Pillar And we're going to go to, to, to the, the hair button. Click on that. And if you go to the render tab, we want to change that to um, Object. And now, so if I go to the eyedropper and select my geometry, so we're going to select the, the biggest rock first. They're now all uh, scattered across the geometry. And um, as a first result, it's not too bad. Uh, some of them are you know, sticking out a little bit in terms of rotation. But um, as, a, as a first thing, it's, it's not bad. It, it's, the, it's there. It gets into the geometry um, without too much uh, discrepancies. Um, but so what you want to do next is you want to go to the advanced button click on that and this button will allow us to actually change that rotation problem that we have on some of the geometry um, so if we click on rotation 
to turn it on. Now we can, um, in the orientation axis, you can change it based on wherever your object is uh, facing up. So for this instance, I believe I had uh, Y. Oh, no. It can take a bit of a, a bit of play with sometimes to find uh, where your object is facing up first. Yeah, so now they're all placed and they're facing the right direction. And um, so from there, that I have, I think I have a good base now and I can start playing with them. What I like to do um, for this one in particular is take the count fairly low. Uh, let's try 50. Um, and then I want to make them bigger. So I think if you uh, scroll it here, you can only go up to 10. But uh, let's try 10. So that's how you can change the size of it. But I want them to be bigger, so let's try 50. Maybe a little too big. 25. Yeah, that's a bit better. I also have uh, my dummies inside of my scenes to make sure I can check my, uh, my uh, sc scale. Uh, this is the character I used for um, for the final image. Um, I believe I have a duplicate, no. but I would use uh, I use this usually just a, a mannequin. So I just go in and check if I like the scale or not. So I think for me, I think they were good enough for the for the size. I think they're big enough for the biggest rocks. So that's the first one, and from there. Um, I just keep working in layers, so I will start with the biggest rock first. Then I, 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 I would go add an, uh, another layer. Let's call that um, it's like medium pillars. Okay. If you want to work, sometimes it can take a bit of uh, a bit of time. The geometry, if it's heavy, it can, it can slow down a bit your machine. Um, so medium pillars. And we're going to repeat the same process, but this time I'm going to be adding um, the medium rocks. Oops, not this one. We'll go to here. Render as object. Now we select our object in the object tab. And, uh, and now it's being populated as well. So we're going to re uh, repeat the same process. Um, we want the, um, the advanced settings. And then we turn on the rotation. And in the rotation axis, we go back to the same that we had. The same thing that we did for uh, the other rocks. And for the size, uh, I had 25. Maybe I can try 15. And we're going to go down to maybe 70 for the number. OK. So that's um, that's pretty much how we do for all the rocks. Um, and then from there, I would go back to um, the rotation and randomize the rotation axis. So, that, so let's see, I would just bring this up, bring this one to a negative number. And then I would randomize that as well. Not too much. I, I noticed for that project that if you do it, the randomize too much, it's uh, it, you can get some crazy results. So it just gives a little bit of uh, variations on it. Um, and I believe there's another. Yeah, so there's also um, the scale randomness that's also useful. Um, let's do that for the big ones first then. So we go back to your first layer, uh, the pillars, and we go to the um, um, in the render tab, scale and scale randomness. So I I play a little bit with it. Sometimes you know every scene can be a bit different. Um, 
but basically your scale of all the objects will be uh, randomized so they're not, not all going to be the same uh, size and and uh, here and it will give you a bit of variations in your scene as well Oop, that's too much let's try point one Uh, 0.50, 0.05. Okay. And you can change um, the length here as well. Again, it's it's a lot of a lot of playing with numbers and see what what works for you and whatnot. Um, yeah. So moving forward to a, a more advanced stage, um, I have all of my pillars. Um, uh, in, uh, scattered, so the big ones, um, medium and the small ones. Um, let's see. Let's take a look at the um, um, the options that would, how I set it up. So I have you know, those big, medium, and small. And then I, like I said earlier, I was uh, I would um, also fill out the um, all of the uh, empty spaces uh, randomly as well. So we have more of a so it looks a bit more natural. But, smaller rocks and maybe some pebbles just for indications um, that's something that I may I probably change in a paint over later but this gives, gives me a good base basically to start and, and finishing the, the image um, and this is what I have so that's the scene so from here now um, I would go ahead with my cameras and uh, and start you know playing with the shots so I have uh, I have this shot here for example that I placed in. Um, I have another shot, uh, this one. And then I think this is the uh, shot that I picked for the final and the, the final image. So basically, from there, really, um, this, if I duplicate this camera, hold on, I have to make that visible first. So if I duplicate the camera, and um, let's just change that really quick. And from here, I can pick um, wherever I want to go into my scene. So it's a bit like really going. I liked this process because it allows me to go. Uh, it's, it's like photography almost. I can go on location and just decide where I want to put my camera angles, right? So I could go here and, and put my camera wherever I want to put it, put, and then uh, decide if it's a good angle for me, see if I like the composition. So I mean, I'm looking for. Uh, depth in my images usually something that I could put in the foreground and middle ground and background uh, and then um, maybe sometimes it's possible extreme uh, background as well um, but really that's in a nutshell that's kind of how I would do it um, I'll try to find you know cool cool angles uh, oh, this this one's cool too and of course there are some you know discrepancies uh, with it like you see this rock right here that can happen um, those are things that I either fix in the paint overs or um, fix them maybe um, um, you know individually as I uh, set up my cameras and I just hide them with another rock in front of it or something like that. But yeah, here we go. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video informative. Uh, please let me know in the comment section uh, if there are other areas that I didn't cover here and that you would like me to cover or to know more about. Uh, if you like what you watch, please um, hit the like button, uh, share if you'd like to, and uh, subscribe if you want to see more. See you next time.